Hey Heartland Online, Trevor in Carrington here. We're so glad you are joining with us today, wherever yeah. you are. I Everywhere. Wonder, I wonder where they are. Man, they all over the world. They all man. over the whole All over the world. world. He's got the whole world in his hands. In his hands, don't, yes. don't, don't he? Salt and light in the earth. Hey, right Hallelujah. now, in the chat, Carrington, we want them to be like in the chat. In there, talking already, with us. right where now. Where are you watching from? What did you have for breakfast, if you even have had breakfast, unless they're like those intermittent fasting people, which which I respect those kind of people. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, no, I ain't there yet. Today, we got a special day because it is Four City Worship Weekend, even oh. here on the digital, digital space. Digital side, Four City Worship Weekend. So y'all know, it's about to be crazy. It's about to be crazy. And he's gonna talk about that in just a second. Yeah. But we also conclude our For Anyone and Everyone series Today already, Trey? I know, man. It's been it's been four really good weeks. It, man, it's been good. I, I love and today, this series, today, bro. do you know that we have a special guest? Today, I, I know. Today, you. I'm not know. gonna give it away. Eric will do that later. But what do we have today? Four city. Four worship city weekend? worship weekend. So y'all know that means we about to go up and worship, because a few weeks ago y'all were in the chat talking about your favorite, your favorite worship, worship songs, and I was like, man. I have never got to tell my favorite worship songs, you man. Got, the, so today, uh, oh yeah, I'm, listen, today we're going to take a look back as we move forward with a few worship songs. Let's worship together, family. So many ways you have been faithful, God. You're faithful. Walking around these walls, oh, I thought by now they'd fall, but you have never felt me. For change to come, but knowing the battles won, for you have never failed me. Yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faith.
Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. Hey. This is my God, you never will, you never will. You never will, you never will. God, you never will, you never will. Yeah. Move that mountain, and I'll see victory. Move that mountain, yeah. yeah. Move that mountain.
faithful. You're still consistent, God. Even in the waiting, when everything around me doesn't look like what you told me, God, you're still faithful. Even in the waiting, when it's cold outside, uh, when the storm falls, when the rain comes, God, you're still good. Even in the waiting, so I will still give you all my praise, all my devotion, because you are worthy, God. Hey, Heartland, so good to see you. Wherever you're at, however you're joining us, maybe you're at home and you're watching on YouTube on your big screen, or maybe this is through Facebook, on your computer, either way. Here's what we want you to know. We're so glad that you continue to tune in every week with us, because here's the truth. Like, you are part of us. I know in this season, it's been real challenging because it can feel like we don't see you, but the truth is we do. You are part of this church, and we're so glad that however you're gathering this day with your coffee or your lunch or whatever that is, with your family or by yourself, that you consider yourself part of this church, remotely part of this church. We've been thinking and praying about you, and the reality is as we looked at this series, this series, this defining series that we're in, called For Anyone and Everyone, this is a series for you too. Like, to understand who we are as a church. Those that are able to gather in this season, but those of us that are at home and choose to be for whatever reason. Like, this is the series for us to understand who we want to be as a family, right? Because that's what we are. You know, we kicked off this series... Uh, Not too long ago with Steve Carter talking about anyone and everyone and and this reality that we want to be a culture where when people come into our building or when we invite people into our digital campus, whatever that pathway might be, that they really do feel welcome, that they feel like we throw parties for people who walk into our space. We looked at Luke chapter 15, the prodigal son and the lost sheep, and the lost coin. And Steve talked to us about being a people that are always welcoming those from the outside in and being a people that goes out and reaches anyone and everyone, that anyone can come into our house, that we go out and we seek everyone. And then just a couple weeks ago, I talked about the power of family and that every single one of us have a role to play in a family because that's how families work. And that every single one of you have a a divine gift. It's been bestowed on you by God to strengthen the church, every single one of us. And it's our job to 
find and release that. And so we talk about anyone and everyone. We talk about empower and release, that that's the kind of church we have to be, where it's not a few professional pastors. We're all pastors that we're empowered to go out and be and strengthen the church. And then last week, Trevor taught us these last three words we've been wrestling with around here these days, and that's generosity and risk-taking. He told us a story about the Good Samaritan, like the epitome of stepping across a street and taking a momentous risk. When all of culture would tell you, don't do that. Don't take that risk. It costs too much. That this is the heart of generosity. You step across the street, you take a risk, and then so generously poured into someone that they, they, they would never, they could never repay. All of these stories over the last three weeks, they've been building blocks for us, for all of us to understand, like, this is what we aspire to be. Like, when we look at this next chapter of our church, that these are the six words that we hope will describe us for this next season that we are a place for anyone and everyone, that we empower and release those that call this place home, that we are a place that is generous and willing to take risks. We want that to be our story. We want that to be what is said about us in this community and beyond. And so I'm excited because today we conclude this series and we conclude it in a different way than we've done the previous series. Now, for some of you that are tuning in for the very first time or maybe just started journeying with us, you may not recognize the man that you're gonna see in this interview with Steve and myself, but here's what you need to know. The man we're about to interview founded this whole thing. He was one of the founders. Doug and Cindy, along with Mark and Sherry Bankard, Doug and Cindy Thiessen, they founded this on an idea. What would it look like if we created a space where people, our friends who were far from God, could find him? Like that was way back in 1998. And as we journey into the next season, it just seems so appropriate to sit down and ask him a little little bit about the beginning of this movement. As we look to our future, the beginning of this movement. And so... I'm excited that you get to spend a little bit of time with someone who has shaped so much of my ministry. Watch this interview with my friend, Doug Thiessen. Hey, Heartland. Um, Eric Parks. Steve Carter. And we are here with the bishop, (laughs) Doug Thiessen. Um, We really are honored that we get to sit with you. And for those of you that don't know, um, Doug and Cindy and Mark and Sherry Bankard were the original founders of Heartland Community Church. And um, I, tell us, Doug, like, give us a little backstory uh, around how Heartland started. What, what was that story? Yeah, we, we saw our friends drifting mm. and, um, and drifting away from God, and in part because um, just church in general, um, it didn't seem to be scratching an itch. Yeah. You know, it just didn't seem to be relevant. It didn't seem... It, the, the, uh, the, the, the teaching just didn't seem um, uh, to capture where they were in life, you know? And so we were wondering, Mark and Sherry and Cindy and I sat in tumbleweeds, had dinner together, and we we're just talking about, well, what, what would it look like if there were a different church environment? And so we set out to try and create that environment. If you look back to, and, and I think this room is filled with people who are a byproduct of the vision, and this, this was it. You kept the main thing the main thing. It really always was like, look, we want to reach our friends for Jesus. Yeah. Whatever tools we have to use, whatever the venue, whatever the service times, like, y- you guys were always, like, I came up underneath you and Mark's leadership. You kept the main things, the main things, even if it was hard. Yeah. Like, um, y- you would s- change service times yeah. recreationally, yeah. right? We were always changing stuff. I mean, we're just trying to find stuff that works. Right. What is going to connect? That's What's going to provide the opportunity for the most people 
to experience the life transformative love and grace and mercy of Jesus. It's, it's amazing though, you know, going back Eric to what you said, like you guys used whatever you had, you know, you used a Bible, and a VHS tape. Yeah. A VHS. A VHS. You know, <laughs> and the, the first service, I'm not kidding you, the first service we, um, uh, uh, we, we borrowed a video projector. I took the VCR out of my family room. I just unplugged it from the family room, so brought it over to the School of Medicine and the auditorium, and we queued up the tape ahead of time so that it, all you had to do was hit, you know, hit play. But you know how VHS tapes, it kind of blink yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. see the little play icon yeah, yeah, would yeah. come on, you know, and everything. It was, it was so bad. Oh, well, you know? But, but, you, but you, yeah, you, you sit there and you think, though, that this, is, this is like for the sake of, for the sake of Christ, for the sake of mission, for the sake of reaching a generation of people who, for some other reason, the church wasn't scratching that itch, to use your language. And it's, it's amazing because I, I didn't know much about Heartland, but what I came to learn about Heartland was how there was this ragtag group of people <laughs> who had this idea of this model of church and VHS, Bible, it, like it, Willow, it was like free R and D, yeah. like because I think I think <laughs> Willow was like I don't think it's gonna work, um, no. but here were these people who were like I, I actually think it's gonna work, and you guys went with it, and all of a sudden, I mean Doug, I don't know if you and and Cindy get this ever get this moment, but like we're sitting in a satellite campus site of an amazing church based in the heart of Nashville, Crosspoint. But that model came out of Rockford. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. you think about in all of these different states, all of these massive cities, all of these incredible churches, the expansion of the gospel that God used and how he worked and whispered to you and Mark and all you had was a Bible and a VHS and a dream to reach the next generation. Yeah. And you were relentless. Yeah. And I just, I just sit back there and go, tens of millions of people. Hmm. And like, for me, just to be here, and we've met five years ago, and hmm. I, just, I, I just, in a sense of thank you, thank you for your faithfulness. Um, thank you for the ways that you've just poured into so many uh, people who have just called this church home since the jump in 98 or in 2000, 2007, like you, pastored them and guided them and really helped them live out the mission to find and follow Jesus. So thank you. Oh, yeah. you're welcome. Thanks yeah. so much. Let me ask you this. Um, you've been tuning in a little yeah. bit on like, <laughs> right? You've been, have you, you, I know you have. Oh yeah. Because I get regular texts from this man, like just literally at the perfect time, encouraging text. So You've been you've been watching what we're up to, and uh, what do you think? I'm a huge fan. Oh my <laughs> goodness, I love what you guys are doing. Yeah. Love it, love yeah. it, love it. I love the freshness, and uh, you know, the first time I heard Carrington lead worship, oh my <laughs> goodness, I'm going, I cannot believe yeah. that uh, that he's leading. And Gabe, I'm so proud of Gabe yeah. stepping up the way he yeah. leads our uh, our worship ministry, and leads that team and has built a team that loves each other and loves Jesus passionately and just wants to express their heart in worship and lead other people yeah. in worship, you know? Uh, I think it is so unique. I think the, the music and the worship is so unique. I mean, unique among, I've not, in a, in a, in a good way, I don't know of any other church in the country that's worshiping with this style and mm. this heart. Mm. Um, and this freshness, I, th I think, you know, Heartland, you guys are on to something. So we look back with such gratefulness in our hearts. Like, as, as a church, we, we wouldn't ha have this moment without all of that. Mm. And yet there's a sense, like, that God is up to something new. Like, there is some new wine skin that needs to be... Um, acknowledged and we stepped toward that and mm -hmm. we wanted we wanted to have you know the bishop here with us as we tell you you're the first to know this um and you are heartland family uh we've been prayerfully considering uh over the last several months really probably longer than that like uh what does this next season look like and how do we continue 
much of what God has play, placed on you and Mark and Sherry and Cindy's heart 20 some years ago, because we do want to carry that legacy uh, forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet we also know that there's a whole generation that needs to know Jesus. And just as we changed uh, 19, in 1998 mm-hmm. to, to capture a generation, so too we'll have to do again. Mm-hmm. And we're on that journey of going, what does that look like? So um, Heartland, this will be the last time that I refer to you as Heartland because on May 2nd, um, I guess it won't be the last time, but pretty close, family. Um, on May 2nd, we're changing the name of our church. Um, we're going to be known as Forest City Church. And this, this campus will be known as the Rockford Campus. Now, there's a second piece to the story, uh, but before I let Steve tell you a little bit about why we're calling it the Rockford Campus, um, I want to let you know that Forest City Church, the reason why we or lean, pick this name for this next iteration for us, is Steve did a talk early on. Well, one, you know that we're known as the Forest City. So all of you folks that grew up in Rockford, you're like, well, yeah, we know that. But Steve did a talk early on, like when um, I first came into lead about the Redwoods and this idea of being interconnected and how those Redwoods underneath the ground connect together. And it was such a perfect metaphor of what we hope to be, how we hope to be connected, um, that it just made sense that in this next season, we would be known as that, for City Church. And um, we're so excited. We wanted you to know first, and um, we wanted you to know so that um, you could brace yourself, but we're inviting you with us, like to come with us in this next journey um, to help us reach an entire generation of people um, who are far from God, just like you set out to do. Um, We're doing it again, and we want you to come with us. And it's exciting because Forest City Church isn't just about Rockford. When we talk about the forest, we're already thinking beyond. So Steve, talk a little bit about what we're doing in the Northwest suburbs. Yeah, so um, every time I'm, I'm in Rockford, I feel like I keep hearing people say, man, there's something happening. Something stirring. And, you know, you even just alluded to it, just tuning in from Nashville. And, um, and I have friends in the Chicagoland area that just go, man, I, I, I feel like something is happening. And, and so we want to let you know that um, there's a group of people who are going to be starting Forest City Elgin. And we're actually going to be there and set up shop. And there's going to be live teaching and live worship. But there is going to be the same ethos, the same mission, the same spirit that began in 1998 is going to be continuing into the city of Elgin and hopefully beyond. And so we're thrilled. We're so excited. So look forward to that beginning sometime in the fall of this year. Now we know, look, change isn't easy. Like this is, I love Heartland Community Church. I love it. Um, it is a big part of my story, a massive part of my family's story. Um, and so we know that change can be hard uh, when we step in these spaces. I wonder maybe from both of your perspectives, you know, when, when we talk about change and we talk about um, a moment like this, how do we walk into it without pretending that it isn't hard, um, but knowing that this next step this is the step we need to take as we move into our future. What comes to mind when we talk about that? Yeah, well, you, you, you know, you talked about new wine and new wineskins. I, I, I was just reading that the other day in my uh, devotional, how Jesus taught that out. And uh, that was the sense that we had when we started Heartland, was that, okay, this is, this is new wine and a new wineskin. You know, I mean, everything needs, we need to think through how we do everything. So, I mean, we had long conversations. Are we going to have offering bags or offering plates or offering buckets or offering baskets or are we going to put a box on the wall? I mean, we talk through every, everything that the church does and how do we have, how, how do we feel like God is leading us uh, to go about um, engaging in that in the life of the church? You know, you guys were around, I think, probably, you, you were there when I, you know, the, my last Sunday, my last weekend with you. And one of the things I told you um, was that 
if the, for the, in order for the church to reach the next generation, you're going to have to do things differently. Uh, you cannot continue to do ministry the way we've always done it if we're going to reach the new the next generation. What's difficult about that is um, that what we've done in the past changed your heart, and it deeply impacted you. And, uh, and so there is something about Heartland that resonates deeply with you because because of your experience, because that's where you met Jesus. That's where your heart was transformed. These were the songs we sang, and this is the way we went about doing ministry when my heart was changed and when my life came alive in Jesus Christ. But now we have the opportunity to say, okay, but how can I set that aside so that this next generation will grow up and have that same experience and encounter Jesus in an authentic, meaningful way. And that's going to be a different language, different musical language. It's going to be a different teaching language. Uh, I I don't know what that means for building style and and, uh, all of that. The Elgin campus is probably going to look different than the Rockford campus just because of a different style of ministry, a different container that's going to be necessary in order to minister more effectively. That's really, really good. You know, um, a few years ago, I had the privilege to spend some time with um, Carly Fiorina, and she yeah. she ran for um, president uh, in 2016. And I, I had the chance, like they, they said, did a QA and a and they're like, anyone have questions? And I was dumb enough to raise my hand. And so I raised my hand. I was like, hey, I, I had a question. Uh, when, when change is happening, in the business sector, in the church, in political landscapes, like what does a leader have to realize and know? And I'll never forget what she said. She said these words. She said, it doesn't matter how spiritually deep someone is. It doesn't matter how emotionally intelligent someone is. It doesn't matter where someone went to college and is the best trained in the world at their craft. When change happens, the first response for every single human is, what does it mean for me? Mm-hmm. And every leader's got to have that. And you just spoke to that. Mm. Because what you think, for, for many of you, you're thinking right now, what, what, what does this mean for me? This place shaped and formed me. What does this mean for me? But, but the beautiful piece is since the beginning of Heartland, it's been keep the main thing the main thing. It's about Jesus and what was in ink. And the truth is, we're keeping the same stuff in ink. Like Eric and I and others, this is going to be the thing that we preach day in and day out. And and the worship, it's always had this spirit, this fresh spirit to draw the masses in, to sing, to cry out with desperation. That's never changing. That's not changing. And yet the, the pencil, the style. So in moments when you start to feel like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, everything's changing. Ask yourself, is what's changing in ink or is what is changing in pencil? And I think how you clearly identify that, that helps helps me because I go, oh, the stuff that's in ink that's been since 1998, it's still in ink. The same heartbeat, the same ethos, the same style, the same desire to reach Rockford and beyond, the same desire to be others focused, the same desire to keep the main thing the main thing, or even some some would say, keep the remain thing the main thing, because we want to remain, abide, abode, make our home in Christ. And this is what we are going to be about in Rockford, in Elgin, continuing online. And and there is gonna be parts that are in pencil. There's gonna be parts that, oh my goodness, there's there's a keyboardist that I, I don't even know what keys are being played right now. And, and that's different than what I grew up in. And yet I'm going, thanks be to God that like his body is so broad and expansive. Thanks be to God that the, that the church, the mosaic is so wide. And, and when we say anyone and everyone, we want to mean it because that's how God's heart was for anyone and everyone. So I'm hoping you join us. I'm so fired up. Like, I think, I think like it's so great because we get to stand on the shoulders of, you know, two, uh, two people that I just think the world of, you know, and what you've given to this place. So thank you. Yeah. Let me say um, how grateful we are for every one of you because so many of you um, 
you really have sacrificed. God has changed your life and you've stepped in and we are inviting you as family to re-up on this journey, um, to, to go with us, to continue in what um, Doug and Mark and Sherry and Cindy set out to do and it's reach our neighbors for Jesus. That's what we're gonna do. That's our plan, that's what yeah. we're up to. And I'm crazy grateful for you. Um, I'm crazy grateful for Cindy. I'm really grateful for Mark and Sherry Bankard and the vision that you guys had. Um, and we are excited about the future. And um, family, we're asking you to go with us. Will you go with us and help us continue in the mission that was started at Tumbleweeds? We just re-up and we say, for this next run, we're going to see more and more people come to Jesus um, and we'll do it together. So thanks for being a part of the family meeting. Thanks, Doug. Thanks for yeah, you're kicking it with us. You're welcome. Uh, it's always fun. Nice. <laughs> it's always nice to be around the bishop. So uh, <laughs> that's good. Thanks, man. I want to share with you three stories throughout the scriptures that detail the power of a name change. Uh, the first one we, we discover in Genesis 32, uh, this guy by the name of Jacob, Every time we know in Scripture that his name, he's being asked, what is your name? You know what he says? He says Esau. He lies. He pretends. He tries to be somebody else. But in Genesis 32, he's on the verge to actually reconcile with his older brother. And he finds himself late at night in a wrestling match with an angel. And this angel's like fighting him and literally he's like, what is your name? What is your name? And for the first time ever in scripture, Jacob says, my name is Jacob. And the angel says, no, 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 your name now is Israel, which means to struggle with God and with man and overcome. From that moment on, Jacob, I mean Israel, walks with a limp and he reconciles with his brother. The second story we have of a power of a name change comes in Matthew 16. One of Jesus' disciples, one of his Talmudim, was a man by the name of Simon. And Jesus takes Simon and the rest of the disciples on this hike. And as they're hiking, he goes, hey, uh, who do people say that I am? And, and people start throwing out different names. Some of people say you're like a prophet. Some people think you're like John the Baptist. And then Simon says, I know who you are. Because Jesus looks at him and goes, who do you say I am? And, and, and Simon says, you're Jesus. You're the son of the living God. And it's in this moment where Jesus had taken his disciples to a place called Caesarea Philippi. This very, very pagan city. No Jewish boy would have ever gone here. And in this city, once every other year, 250,000 people would gather for some profoundly dark and broken practices. And Jesus takes his disciples here, and in this moment, he tells Simon, he goes, no, no, you know what? You, you will no longer be Simon. Your name will now be Peter. In Greek, it's the word Cephas, which literally means rock. And then he says, on this rock, I'm gonna build my church. And most people think, oh, he's talking about Peter, but he's really pointing to a massive rock where all of this pagan activity happened and said, on this rock in the middle of culture, I'm literally going to build my church. And so he names and renames Simon to be Rocky because he wants Peter to always remember that this story, this story of good news, the gospel is supposed to be built in the places that feel the most darkest and broken. The third story comes from Acts chapter 13. And we know this man named Saul. Saul had come to Christ. He was a persecutor. He was a murderer. He was a violent, violent man. He comes to Christ and he has this moment where he's literally going out and he's beginning to kind of share this message of grace and, and redemption, what had rescued him. And he finds himself in a conversation with this proconsul. His name is, his name is Sergius Paulus. And he literally leads Sergius Paulus to faith. And Saul, we learn in Acts 13, becomes known as Paul. It's like he literally takes on the name of his first person he led to faith. Oh, who is the first person you led to faith? Can you imagine if you just took on their name? 
And it's literally, Saul had like these Jewish roots, but he takes on this name Paul, which reminded Paul and, and, and the people that this story was going out to a Gentile audience. And so Saul being really, really aware of the people that God had entrusted him to reach takes on the name of someone who he had the privilege to lead to Christ. Three stories in a matter of a few minutes straight from the scriptures to detail the power of a name change. One was a man named Jacob who, man, never actually owned up to who he truly was. And when he finally did, God gave him a new name and said, your name is going to be one that represents what it means to struggle with me and struggle with others and overcome. The second one was a reminder of what Jesus wanted to do, which was to build his church in the broken and darkest places of culture. And the third one, Saul, becomes Paul because he takes on the name of the person he's trying to reach and takes on the name, uh, a name that's actually going to be more conducive to reach the masses of a new audience. And friends, I, I, I found myself talking with Eric one night and, and I just said, I mean, I feel like this is where we're headed. I mean, there's moments in all of us where we've drifted. And we just heard from Eric just some of the stories of what God wants to do and what we've heard from Doug Teeson, like the, the heartbeat of why this church began. And, and I think we're going to be walking into the future as Four City Church in a wildly more humble way and experience God actually doing something as Four City Church. But I also think that for us, we, we, we don't want this to just be here in Rockford, but man, to see what God wants to do beyond and how we're going to actually go and, and, into places. And, and we know God's already there, but we're going to partner with God. And we're actually going to get to join with Him and what He longs to see happen, where grace and redemption takes over. And I think we're never going to lose sight of this book, the story of grace, the Holy Spirit, the love of God, and God's love for people. Because this has always ever only been about people. And just like Saul became Paul to reach it's like Heartland's becoming for a city to reach more and more and more people. And friends, I'm hoping you'll join us. I think it's going to be an exciting, exciting, momentous opportunity. Here in Rockford and Elgin online, there's going to be opportunities for you to join with us in worship, to join with us in practice, to join with us live, to join with us in getting the word out, to join with us and being people who limp, and be people who aren't afraid of the darkest places, and being people who want to do whatever it takes to reach our friends and people who are in need of the power of grace and peace. I hope you'll join us on this ride called Forest City Church.
Hey, thank you so much for joining with us today. Today, as you heard, was a historical day in our church, in your church. And here's what we want to do right now. A QR code is going to come up on the screen. We want you to pull out your phone. And what you need to do is pull out the camera app, take a picture of it or just zoom in on it. And then a website's going to come up. Click that website, fill out that form. Here's the reason why we're doing this, because we want to send you some free Forest City Church merch it's exclusive just for you right now as our online campus we want to get this to you as soon as we can so you got to fill out that form and uh you get some free four city church merch which is like that's the best thing you know until like christmas time so do that for us and uh, again we're so grateful as our online digital campus for continuing to be a part of all the things that god is doing here and uh, we're so grateful for you. If you would like to continue to be a part, you can always give. And here's what you need to do. You can text Forest City, two words, Forest City is a new keyword to 77977 as we continue to do all the things that we're doing here and reach you, your friends, your family, and everyone who's calling themselves a part of Forest City Church moving forward. We love you so much. We are so grateful for you. Next week is Mother's Day. You're gonna wanna stay tuned for that to celebrate all the moms. We love you, Forest City Church. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>